Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa man wala Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My name is Harun Thani This is another edition of Ramadan Da'at Today the 11th day of Ramadan Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen That is to say we have um, 19 more days or 18 more days to go May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us as an act of um, uh, Ibadah. I have with me today to coordinate today's episode, Sister Suleha Abaduni. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We thank Allah, the creator of the universe, for sparing our lives this morning. And um, you are indeed welcome to Ramadan Diet. As usual, we have exciting programs for you. We will be starting now with Harawi prayers from Haram at Mecca. After that, we'll be taking an interesting documentary. After that, we'll be taking the Living in the Month of Ramadan segment with Ustaz Harun Tani, where we'll be discussing a very important topic with an erudite scholar of Islam. And also not forgetting the Path of Paradise segments by Zakat and Solako Foundation, The Virtuous Woman by Al Muminat, and of course, Proudly Muslim, and the all important and much anticipated interactive segments where you'll be asked simple questions and you get to win lots of fabulous prizes. So, inshallah, now we'll start today's program with several prayers. Stay with us. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm al-Din, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ليس عليك هداهم ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء وما تنفقوا من خير فلأنفسكم وما تنفقون إلا ابتغاء وجه الله وما تنفقوا من خير يوفى إليكم وأنتم لا تظلمون للفقراء الذين أحصروا في سبيل الله لا يستطيعون ضربا في الأرض يحسبهم الجاهل أغنياء من التعفف تعرفهم بسيماهم لا يسألون الناس إلحافا وما تنفقوا من خير فإن الله به عليم الذين ينفقون أموالهم بالليل والنهار سرا وعلانية فلهم أجرهم فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين يأكلون الربا لا يقومون إلا كما يقوم الذي يتخبطه الشيطان من المس ذلك بأنهم قالوا إنما البيع مثل الربا وأحل الله البيع وحرم الربا فمن جاءه موعظة من ربه فانتهى فله ما سلف وأمره إلى الله ومن عاد فأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون يمحق الله الربا ويربي الصدقات والله لا يحب كل كفار أثيم إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وأقاموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة لهم أجرهم لهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وذروا ما بقي من الربا إن كنتم مؤمنين 
فإن لم تفعلوا فأذنوا بحرب من الله ورسوله وإن تبتم فلكم رؤوس أموالكم لا تظلمون ولا تظلمون وإن كان ذو عسرة فنظرة إلى ميسرة وأن تصدقوا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون الله الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله Welcome back to your favorite segment, Living in the Month of um, uh, Ramadan, where we uh, talk about um, issues uh, thoughtfully, critically, and we discuss it extensively. Today, inshallah, it's not going to be an exemption. We are going to look at um, a, a part B of um, uh, the topic Al Qanaatu Wal Iqtisadu Fil Marisha. Um, which simply means uh, contentment and prudence. Contentment and prudence. I have with me to discuss uh, the topic, Malam Nasruddin uh, Belo, the Amir of Al Falah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakum khair. Now, we start with definition. That's our normal, uh, our tradition. What is that is contentment. Let's start with that, then we'll talk about prudence. Ansibullah Samina Limina Shaitan Rajimi Amsihi Wanafkihi Wanafsi Bismillahi Rahman Rahim was Salatu was Salam Allah Sayyidina Muhammad Wala Ali was Sabi Watabihin Waman Tabi Ahmed Slan Layamuddin. We thank Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala who has sustained our life up to this time and uh, give, has given us the opportunity to discuss some of the crucial issues, the issue of contentment and prudence. Uh, Alhamdulillah, operationally, when we are talking of uh, contentment, it is the ability to appreciate the favor of Allah and uh, also live within that favor of Allah, not being extravagant, being grateful to Allah, and utilize every resource Allah has given to us in the best manner. Ability to utilize it in the best manner, ability to appreciate that favor, ability not to be too demanding mm. uh, is what all comes together and be referred to as contentment. Okay. What about prudence? Prudence and contentment, they are two okay. sisters. They go together. Okay. If you are contented, it means that you are prudent. Because the, the, the prudence is a function. It's one of the products that comes from being contented. Because uh, when you are prudent, you are able to utilize what Allah has given you. In terms of resources, I want to say resources, not only financial resources, not only material, even intellectual resources, the spiritual resources, the life that Allah has given us, ability to use that time, the time, the time that Allah has given us within, within our life, ability to make best use of it and uh, achieve a lot from it, ability to plan with our resources, ability to set target with our resources, ability to achieve with our resources, in fact, ability to also assist others in achieving with their own resources what comes together and being referred to as being prudent. So it's a time that you even, even use in accounting. You need to be prudent. Whatever resources you're having, you need to utilize it wisely, wisely, mm. effectively and efficiently mm. to achieve your objective. So ability to do this is, is what is being referred to as prudence. So there are two sisters, but one supersedes the other. When you are not contented, it means that prudence is lacking. So when you, when there is contentment, it means that prudence is present. So you cannot separate the two. So when you are contented, you are you be grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. 
you'll be able to identify and appreciate resources around you, then you'll be able to make best use of it. When you have all this, there is contentment and prudence now comes as a function, as a function, as a product that comes from being contented. Allah Ta'ala. So if um, we are talking about prudence, we are talking about, first of all, the presence of um, of Naima, of um, Allah's favor. So be it favor of time, favor of health, favor of um, wealth, or life, or, life, or knowledge. Yes. So the way and manner you now use those favors, that's what prudence is. Okay, that's the well. Now let's go back to the issue of contentment. Why do we really need contentment? Why do we need it? We need to be contented because um, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us very clear that the nature of man, he lies so many benefits. Hmm. The nature of man is such that if you give him 10 items, he will request for another 20. He will give him 20. Takathur, takathur. He will refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhaakum takathur. He will refer to takathur. Alhaakum takathur. Hatta zurtum al-makabir. Kala sawfa ta'alamu. Summa kala sawfa ta'alamu. The nature of man is that he wants to keep on accumulating, accumulating more. It's until the only time he will be satisfied when he's been buried, mm. when he enters the grave, and by then nothing. He has no. He has no responsibility again. Mm. It is the time for being rewarded mm. for what he has done or being punished. For what he but when he's still done. alive, when he's still alive, he wants to acquire. If he has a bicycle, he wants a he motorcycle. Wants to he wants more. If he has a motorbike, he, he wants a car. Yes, he wants more. If he has a car, he wants the best he car. Wants more. If 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 he's been if he becomes a councillor, he wants to become the, the chairman. chairman of the local. If he gets to the chair, he wants to become the governor. <laughs> After leaving governor, he wants to become senator. Mm. When you get to the senate, he wants to become the senate president. Mm. When you get there, he wants to become the UN secretary general. So he wants to. He still wants more. Wants more. and if he's not contented, first he will not appreciate the favor of Allah. Allah has given to him, uh, he will not be able to even use because instead of him using that resource Allah has given to him in the best manner to he benefit will, he will use it to pursue and another humanity, one. he will keep on asking for more, asking for more until he dies. He will okay. either be useful to himself or even be useful to hum to the human community. So there is need for us to be contented. Mm. There is need for us to thank Allah because one of the you know, the issue of corruption corruption mm. is a product of not being contented Allah because Allah, Allah. yes yes it's a, it's a product of because when man does not really appreciate the before of Allah on himself then the next thing is that he wants to acquire more then he can be desperate so is corruption is not as a result of lack of means or lack it's that if you don't have it's a product of not being contented Allah mm. has given everybody one thing or the other mm. the head Allah has given to us cannot be quantified in terms of naira and kobo mm. The life Allah has given to us cannot be quantified in terms of naira and kobo. Mm. The time that we have to do so many good deeds, to to hand for our livelihood in this world and prepare for the hereafter, cannot be quantified in naira and kobo. But in most cases, man doesn't even sit down to appreciate this. I think I used to say, Allah, I thank you for the health you are giving. I thank you for the life you are giving. I thank you for giving us the opportunity of time in our life to do something. I think the people, people are working up as well. I need promotion. <laughs> this contract, I want to go for the interview. I want to win this contract. Mm -hmm. This election that I want to contest, I want to... People keep on asking for money and they don't even thank Allah for what he has, for what he has given to them. And what mm. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, Allah says, Ask 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 I I will always remember you as my creation, and you should be grateful to me. What I talk for, I never be ungrateful. But if man is not contented, he will not be grateful. So we need to be contented so that we can be grateful to Allah. We need to be contented so that we can appreciate what Allah has given to us and make best use of it. We need to be contented so that we can do well in this world and prepare for next world. We need to be contented so that we can move away from corruption and ill practices. So we, we need contentment because the alternative to contentment is negative. Yes. Is evil. It's evil. Is um, corruption. Corruption. Is, uh, desperation. Desperation. Okay. At all costs. At all costs. I must be there. I must be, I it must, must be mine. I must, be I must have more. And then while others don't have, so you'll be looking at that and not that. 
maybe that is the meaning of the hadith of the Prophet sure, that says sure. that uh, uh, materially we should look at those below us and not those who are and not those above us. Or if if, um, if um, somebody says um, I only have slippers, then I want shoe. You should remember those who do not even have Any feet. Yeah, they don't have feet. Back. They don't have feet. And if somebody says, I don't have feet, you should remember those who don't have leg. At all. At all. He has leg but no feet. But somebody has no leg. And then if he says, okay, I don't have leg, he will remember those who are, don't have life. At all. Not talk of having leg. They don't have life. They are not living. Or they are living but they are not healthy. So we should always look at those below us not those above us. But in terms of the material issue the Prophet said, in order not to misunderstand that hadith, if we keep on looking at those below us materially, it seems as if the law of economics says that uh, uh, the presence of competition drives the economy of any given country. So there will, there will be lack of competition. There won't be competition. If we keep on looking at those below us, but well, if we look at those above us, I, okay, I want to be like Dangote, I also want to have this, like, uh, some, and it's people mentioning this, okay, this is what I want to be. That will drive competition, it will drive the economy. So how do we justify the two, given the fact that in Islam, we don't have to seek for hereafter at the experience of this world, we must not also forget about Our hereafter when we are also. looking for this world. We have to balance the two. So how do we balance the two? I can say what I don't know how much I'm worth at all. That's one of the things I've made our community, our generation, to be the one of middle class. Mm -hmm. We are people of middle class. Not only on the issue of contentment. I need to emphasize that Islam generally is a is a religion of middle class. Mm -hmm. It's not to any extreme. Uh, when we say we are contentment, it does not contradict the fact that we need to be hardworking. In fact, it is even the sooner professor saying that you live a day to be better than yesterday, even materially. Mm. That is, if you are a trader, you go to the market and the profit you are having today is not more than the one you are having yesterday. Then you should check what is going on. Am I not doing my business well? Am I not praying to Allah very well? Am I not being prudent in my activity? Am I not being very good in terms of attracting customer? Am I product not so good? Are not, are not so competitive in the market? You should look into that. And when we are saying that, it means that as a Muslim, and I will go back to what Prophet has said, maybe Salah. it will make us to understand. Uh, in the hadith that was uh, narrated, by Abu Said al Qudir, Rodi Allah, and we are Professor Samuel Roha Minkul Munkar. Fabigayiro, Biadi, Faina Miastati, Fabicolli, Fabilisani, Faina and such Fabicolli, Vadarika Zaluliman. Professor Weber says something wrong in the society. Fali Yugayiro, Biadi, you should make change with your hand. Faina and such Fabilisani, if you are not able with your hand, then you should use your tongue, writing, talking, speaking, preaching, teaching. If you cannot do that, what be, what be called be? Then you should do that with your heart. But what they look at that lemon, that's the least of it. Eating something or try to make change because it, this is only within you. I'm going back to the show of Fali Yuga Yubi The hand is, is figurative. It's not the physical hand. It means that the power Allah has given to you, you should use it. The moment are saying power, that we should be in control. Mm. Intellectually, you should be sound. Mm. You should be certificated. You should be well read. It means that as a Muslim, you learn and learn and learn for, for, for a purpose, for a genuine purpose. Mm. It means that in, economically you are there. Mm. In terms of economy, nobody can push you aside. In fact, you are the people that control the economy. So what that means is that as Muslims, we have to occupy that seat mm. of the driver, mm. not, the pass, not the one just inside the vehicle. We mm. have to occupy it because we want to make change. It means that we are talking of the best in every career, in every profession, in every industry, to be able to talk to point at Muslim, that the best in trading, the best in commerce, the best in medical, the best in academic, they are Muslim. The best in police and immigration, they are Muslim that you, they are trustworthy. So it means that you are up to doing your career, you are doing well intellectually, you are okay. And politically, you can't be pushed aside. It means that you occupy a position of authority that you can make changes. The intention should be sincere. You are not pursuing things just because, and you are not desperate. But you are pursuing because you know that you need those things to serve Allah. Mm. 
Mm. You need to attend them because if you are with us, make that change. Prophet is talking about. Then you should occupy the seat of the man that can really make change. I normally give uh, an analogy that even a judge of a court, he knows himself, he appreciates himself. He will not go into issues that are too that could even ridicule him. You cannot be walking across into the market and see people fighting and now come out from a sky and try to be judging. You know that's not the way. If police do their own job, those people are being arrested, they fight their case, they interrogate them, they will bring them to him. Because he occupies the seat to do that. Mm. So if he's not the judge, he cannot he cannot adjudicate on that case. So it means that we have to really occupy the seat judiciary, legislature, executive, in every aspect, in every arm, in every industry. True, true legal means. True legal means. Mm. So that's what that hadith is referring to. Mm. And that is, to, to an ordinary Muslim, we just pursue a career. But to the economic, to the economist, he's competing with others. Mm. So, but in, in his mind, he knows that he's not in, engaging in unnecessary competition. He just wants to occupy a position to make positive change, which will affect Muslim and non Muslim. So it means that as a Muslim, it's not all you say, oh, in this world, we need, Allah decides whatever will be, and the man is sleeping. Hmm. He's not doing it. Even spiritually, even to attain spiritual rejuvenation, it takes exercise. Yeah. A man who engages in Tilawal Quran, you cannot compare him with a man who does not. A man who engages in Star Jude, you cannot compare with a man who does not. A man who engages in doing Askar, remembers of Allah, in word, in action, in thought, you cannot compare with a man who does not, and so forth. A man who engages in fasting even beyond Ramadan, you cannot, engage, you cannot compare with a man who just fasts in Ramadan only. So, even spirituality requires sacrifice, requires so many activities to attain a level, and high level in spirituality. So not to even talk of issue of material. But as a Muslim, we are not desperate. It's not just to be looking at, hey, BC, I want to be like this. But at all costs, no, it should not be at all costs. As we are doing that, we understand that there is destiny. That's the difference. In the economy, destiny is not taught. Mm. It is a matter of, if you can make effort, mm. you will achieve. Might yes. is right. But we know as a Muslim, whatever effort you make, you can only achieve a cell with that Allah is waiting for you. Mm. So it, we, are, we live in between that. We are making all the efforts in a very legal manner, in a very judicious manner. At the same time, we appreciate that nothing can happen except what Allah is destined to happen. So as we appreciate destiny, we appreciate that we are not destined, then we should be very active to attain the peak in every career, in every position. In terms of economy and politics, in terms of social cultural change in the society, we should be at the peak so that we can make the positive change the Prophet was talking about. So there is, there is no contradiction between having Konara, that is contentment, and also uh, competing with others in what is good and in a legal way. There is no contradiction. There is no contradiction. Good. When we look at the Muslims, our priests, or something of the Sahaba, and talking of them, the Tabi'in, may Allah's mercy and um, blessings be upon them all. Uh, this issue of contentment is not a problem. It was not a problem. They were contented. We were, were told in the book of history that um, uh, people of their generation, those who, at like those who are not of their religion, who always call on to them that come and adjudicate in our case. Come, come and be our leader. Come and rule over us. Because we know you are just and you will never uh, be sentimental in given judgment. So, but Muslims of today, if I ask the question, if I say, are we like that? It's like I'm beating around the bush. It's very clear that we are not like that. We are very desirous, we are very um, materialistic, we lost it. We don't even know if uh, we should. You know, part of our etiquette, our characteristic should be to be contented. We don't even know that. So how do we? Let me say. Let me start with. Where do we get it wrong? Okay. Why is it that we prefer to be materialistic to to be contented? That's number one. And what do you think is the cause? First thing is where did we get it wrong? And the second issue is, 
what are the causes that led to the fact that today Muslims are not contented because we are supposed to be shining example. Yes, we are supposed to be shining example. The how we get it wrong and where they are interwoven. It is through the process of socialization. The way our, up, our upbringing to account for it. Uh, when you have a child, the way the child is being trained, the environment in which the child is being trained, and what the child also sees in, in the surrounding, detect how we now react and also decide what to do. Alhamdulillah, well, I mean, the agent of socialization, the parents, the family, the, family, mm. the peer group, the friends, the schools, mm. uh, even the mass the community. media, the mass media, are now coming to the issue of, again, uh, the issue of religion. These five, they have not done so well so far in the contemporary society in giving the right orientation to to our our up the, the children that are that are growing. So. They are the causes. And when we say they are the causes, it means that we are the causes because we all belong to one family or the other. We have our peer group and the rest. Now, it is going back to the basis, the issue of terabia, when it comes to Islamic socialization. It is going back to the basis that we solve the problem. We get it wrong in almost every aspect of life. Even in terms of what we pursue in school. We are not identifying the right thing. It is about these people are going this way. We are also moving that way. We are not even we are not even identifying the real need. Because when you don't know your your real need, the need that things that you really need, need to cater for, then you will be beating about the bush, you will not really get it. So we get it wrong almost in every aspect. Even when it comes to the issue of Ibadah, we are not doing too well. And it is a function of those things I've mentioned. When the education, when the Islamic education is not sufficient or is being polluted along the way, you know, you are, you are, the other time we are talking of quality and quantity. The quality is poor, the quantity is also very dim diminishing. Then there will be issues. So, but there are solutions so that we don't feel too bad. And we need one thing is personal. As I grew up in life, one is suffer to realize that. That free will Allah has given to us is being so much abuse and is the cause of being going to paradise and hell. And no matter what you say, those who will be going to hell will go to hell. For the answer be like, we don't pray to be among those. And even if there is no effort of dawah as such, those who Allah will hate to go to paradise will still go to paradise. But when one is using the dawah as a platform, it is a way of saying, okay, basically, in life, if people now come into this, accept what Allah has given, almost everybody will go to paradise. Hmm. We are in life. So it's a function of individual deciding. Whatever the world is doing, whatever direction people are taking, I want to take a direction that will lead me to Allah. Direction that will lead me to with one of life, pleasure of Allah, in conforming with Kitab and Sunnah. That, and individual needs to take that, I need to emphasize that. Hmm. Individual needs to take that decision first. Hmm. And now be able to influence others. Having said that, coming to the, the show, the individual must know what he wants, and his goal and target should be paradise, yes. Allah's pleasure. Yes, that's the utmost. That, that's, the utmost. Hmm. that's the utmost. Now coming to uh, how we can really ameliorate hmm. the problem. It's not so bad that we cannot change it. Hmm. First, right from birth, parents at home, the family should make sure. They are bringing up a child that is well fast in Islamic education mm. and well fast in mundane education. As we have said earlier, it's not sufficient to give religious education alone and we ignore the mundane. It means because we want to produce the best doctors. We need doctors. In fact, in things that we may not even, even in babbing, we need the best babas who will appreciate that this is how to bab Islamically. This is not how to bab as a Muslim. As a tailor, as a fashion designer, we need those who have Islamic consciousness. This is how to sew clothes Islamically. You need not to sew this because it's against the dictator. So we need best of that. The family should raise up children who will appreciate this, who will fear Allah, who will appreciate human beings like themselves, who will not be desperate in just accumulating, accumulating for accumulating sake, who will have appreciate that whatever you attain in this world, you are to benefit and it should be a source of benefit to humanity as a whole. It's a way of living well in this world and in the next world. Then, when it comes to schools, 
the, the, the curriculum should be well packaged. <laughs> that is not just about this word. Mm -hmm. So even when we are doing our sciences, the physical sciences should appreciate God. We mm. should know that it's not just nature. So in our philosophy, we should not be talking of argument against existence of God. It's too bad. So therefore, you decided to go to school for four years to read philosophy, and to cultural anthropology, psychology. Um, a very large quantity of what is being imparted into him is argument against God. Where do we start from? <laughs> if he's to argue against God, how do you ask him to fear that God? Mm -hmm. So, It's like fighting against the origin, so, where we started from. So mm -hmm. our curriculum needs to be changed. It's mm -hmm. not only about anthropology alone, it's not about uh, philosophy alone, it's not about psychology. It means for every course, we should understand that the essence of having school and having trained people is to train people who will be God conscious, who will appreciate the resources around them, to be able to make better of their resources, who are preparing for abundant success in this world and in the next world. That is the role of school. The mass media too. There is a lot to be done. Because so far, the, 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 how we can define, describe the mass media is that they are moving forward in terms of spiritual rejuvenation, taking people to God. They are moving forward with one step and moving backward with ten steps. There will be activities, if it is the electronics, or the print media, or even the online. There will be activities, messages that will drive people to God, maybe less than 10%, Allah. and more than 90% are, that are taking people away from God. Promotion of gambling, promotion of adultery and communication, promotion mm. of music and music and music, mm. I don't really understand. Mm. Excessive promotion of sport, Islam is not a great sport, but people so much love sport today that it has become the topic of every home. Last and week Saturday, last week Saturday, a match took place, and one of the brothers was sending messages on WhatsApp that if you are a true Muslim, you should not, because the match was supposed to all take place at around the Shah. If you are a true Muslim, at least for the sake of Allah and Ramadan, forget about this match. You must not miss Salat al Isha. Neither must you miss Tarawi. Some people still absconded. <laughs> they absconded. So the issue of sport. And at the end of the, the, the football match, none of them were paid anything. So the contentment that Allah has given us the health to serve Him was not there. The Allah has given us life to really appreciate Allah is not there. Mm. And the prudence of using the time well and what Allah is giving is not there. So that is part of what we are saying. And that's what the family need to work on. That's what the, the, the education system need to work on. That's what the mass media need to And the religious institution, we need to do more. Mm. We need to do more. As Yes, we engage in so much prayer, but we should do more of sensitization, education. If people are well educated, well, they really know they are well synthesized and they appreciate that this is the role they need to play with Allah as our Allah. There will be a better society. I, I so, think on the issue of well education, well educated, we have to look at the difference between being educated and the, being literate. Today people talk more of, when they say you are not educated, they mean you are not literate. But you don't need to be literate to be educated because many of the men of the past were not literate were not literate socrates who was known before jesus christ did not write anything he couldn't write everything that was said about him was written by his student or student of his students they were quotations it wasn't his own book that he also wrote also Jesus Christ, who also came before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, didn't go to any school. Neither did he didn't know how to read nor write. In fact, he was quoted to have said that, let her kill it. If you write things, you are killing yourself. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was described by Allah as Umi, unlettered prophet, who didn't go to school, nor knew how to write. So everything about this man has to do with wisdom and wisdom is a form of education that is missing today is the best of all education so that does that does not mean we are discouraging people from learning we are not what we're saying is i know on the street when someone says go away you are not educated what that person is simply talking of is you are not literate and also to <laughs> to make it worse 
when we say you are not educated and we mean you are not literate, we are not even talking of literacy as in knowing how to read or write in any language. We are talking of English language. You can see how, uh, I mean, uh, ignorant those who even claim to be educated are. So if you cannot speak English, that means you are not literate. Whereas you may be able to speak fr French, you may be able to speak um, Arabic, uh, uh, Danish, you may be able to speak Arabic and read and write and compose things, words in Arabic or in Danish or in uh, whatever language you are, you master. So you don't need to be able to speak English to say you are educated. So I think we should hit that what is that education we are talking of? We say we need to change our form of education. We need to. What are we really referring to? We are referring to an education system, a curriculum that will bring positive change because it's about making change, both in the mundane and spiritual component of our life. Okay. If one is lacking, then something is wrong. A total, a total change. change in it. And with that, we can have solution. And that's why I mentioned individual ability. There's a function in the beginning. Individual need to really be convinced and say, if, if I know I need this, I will pursue it. I will pursue it. I will get it. And that's why individual will really need to get that. And we should appreciate, as you have said, sir, that uh, education is not just about going to school and be able to write, to read and write in one language. It's a, it should make positive change. It's about identifying the challenges in the society, both the, the ones that affect the mundane component of our life and the spiritual component. I think I will be underlying that spirituality because that is what is lacking. Mm. If we go to school today, how to make use of their time, the, the education is lacking. How to appreciate their God and prepare for the next world, the education is lacking. How to be contented with what God has given to them, the education is lacking. How to be prudent with what God has missed. And even when they are identifying this, they are looking at it from material angle, Allah. not the spiritual angle. So, that education is lacking. It's only when we put the two together, when they are interconnected, and people are well educated. That will, that will get the results. We'll get, we'll get this. So we need to really work. And that's how I started with the field. As institutions are doing their job, each individual, individual. that the community, the society, the mm. nation at large, should mm. be convinced that, look, this is the target I want to set. If I should die now, I will be the one only in my grave. Mm. Let me do things. Let me get it right and do it well. Mm. Allah, Allah, Allah. So on that note of uh, getting proper education, we we'll would then go on a very short break because we are still discussing about uh, contentment and prudence. Please don't go away. Do you want to remain relevant and sustain the growth of your business using ultra-modern machines for improved productivity? Well, look no further because YKM Products Limited has in stock various industrial machines to help you achieve your business objectives. Our machines are of top quality standard with 6 month warranty on mechanical parts and technical support. Contact us today at YKM Products Limited, Head Office, 42 Old Yaba Road, Adekunle Bus Stop, Ebute Metal Lagos, Showroom, Two Stock 4, Ganyu Abiado Close, Adroa Bus Stop, Alagbado Lagos. Salam alaikum, ya Habib, salam. 
نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك You're welcome back to living the month of Ramadan. Our topic of discussion is still uh, contentment and uh, prudence. And my guest is still Malam Nasruddin. Uh, before we went on that short break, we've discussed extensively about the definition of the two, about contentment, about prudence. We've also looked at uh, why do we need uh, contentment and then uh, why is it that today it is missing, particularly among the Muslims, why are we no more contented and then we also look at the causes that led to that so part of the causes madam Nasuddin, before we went on short break is uh, uh, we, we said the education so i'm now looking at the change in value uh, the education supposed to target something uh, when you say you're educating the populace what are you educating them on because in that way education could also be a means of uh, uh, destruction when the education is not geared towards a positive goal. So, uh, in those days, the positive goal is value. Everything about our education in those days is value be it science, be it art, be it commercial, whatever the education form of it, be it religious education. They all, I remember we were in primary school, what we used to learn is moral instructions, moral instructions, and so. Uh, we were taught morality in the real sense from primary school and then um, uh, good names like it was said in Yoruba Adi is better than gold and silver so that is value they are telling you that if you see gold, you see silver you should aim at good names you should not look at that uh, bringing shame into the family even with but today what we have is the opposite we have corrupt people, we have um, thieves, we have um, armed robbers, we have um, uh, the worst among us in terms of um, uh, family setting, being celebrated every now and then. Nobody wants to. They call, even call them celebrity. That's what they call them. And unfortunately, either we like it or not, we can see the results in the way our children are growing up. They want to be like those people, regardless where they come from. We can see the result in our marriages. People get married to beauty. They get married to uh, sweet tongues, those who can talk and uh, without looking at After a month or two months into the marriage, they realize, no, this is the wrong uh, place to come. So what do you think should be the value? And why is it that today our value has changed? Instead of targeting uh, that value we target yes, targeted yesterday, we, va we are targeting money now. Everybody wants to be rich. Madam, the target 
the third be uh, the education, the upbringing, upbringing we are we should be giving to our children is aiming towards placing Allah as our Jannah. Mm. The truth of the matter is that if you aim towards placing Allah, you will get both this one and the next one. That's mm. just it. Your share in this world, you will not lose it. We have said it before that as a Muslim, I will say, Kuntu Khaira Ummat Hurijat al Nas, Tamuruna Bil Maru, Tari Adam al We are the best of all community ever raised for mankind, according to Quran, Surah Tura, the branch of the three, verse 110. You command good, you forbid the food, and you also have deep faith in Allah and His Prophet. Commanding good, you know that you need to be positioned to command good. Then, you seek for those things in a legitimate, in a legitimate way. You are hard working. That's why you are doing your personal. So the uh, uh, getting the one like or the one like Akbar, the, the seeking for the pleasure of Allah should be uppermost in our life. That should be our value. So as a teacher, uh, as a student, as politicians, as executive, those who occupy the office in judiciary and legislature. Seeking the pleasure of Allah, that should be the fallow. That should mm. be the fallow. And when that is the fallow, it does not stop us from getting what Allah has destined for us in this so in any way. Allah. We get it. We get it. And we get it in a very honorable way. Allah. We get it. We are so more honorable in this and we shall be honorable in the soul. Um, it starts from individual as I said. Each individual should appreciate this. Irrespective, I keep on underlining the future so that if whatever people are doing in your surrounding, once you are confused that according to Kitab of Allah, the book of Allah, the Quran, according to the Sunnah, is wrong, you move away from it. Then the family should also promote this value system. Hmm. Oh, the father should be an exemplary father, the mother should be, and they should be able to now tell their children, this is the right way. This is what Allah wants, this is what Allah does not want. They will be able to do that so much, but also using their resources, using their money and time to ensure that children of today don't only gain mundane education. It's not just about having degrees, degrees without spiritual education. Uh, we should let, let, me, let me bring in this example so that you would add that to your submission. I once met a principled uh, family or uh, person who lived his life uh, with principles, people know him, he never compromised um, anything. But recently, he has compromised so many things. And once I heard, he said, how do I get money to maintain my house? How do I get money? By, my, by saying my house, he will meant accommodation, not, his, not the house he built himself. How do I get money to send my children to school? He says, so I have to overlook something. So if you are talking about individuals, holding on to those values, but there is limit to what an individual could do. And the essence of government is to do what individual cannot do. So if the government is not doing what individual cannot do, it is the same individual that will cater for himself and do the job of the government for his own family. Because what the government is supposed to do is to provide services that will be general. So if the general services are no more there, the individual will be forced to go out and pick the portion of that service that is not supplied to the general community for his own use and benefit. So he is adding more to his responsibilities. Such individual is likely to succumb and that, I call that the fall of the giant. So it's happening now. And I think, so if you're talking about an individual taking up the challenge, yes, but not every individual will be, some will die like that. They say, I don't mind. Instead of me to lose this value, this core value, let me die. I will die the way I am. But even the family will gang up against him, his wife, his children will gang up against him that, I don't know if I'm giving, let me give a particular example. A judge who is known, a judge who is known to be excellent, he is very just and he does his work correctly and adequately. He doesn't compromise justice. But at a point in time, <laughs> he holds accommodation, he has to pay. He couldn't pay, he was given ejection notice. The same thing, he has to pay for his children who are ejected from school. Then a case was brought before him, and they only told him, you just have to overlook, no, don't, have, don't say anything, just overlook it, and you get 10 billion. <laughs> no. 
So he refused. The children are crying. The wife at home are also saying the same thing. So at that particular time, this person is forced into doing what he did not believe in. So I think that is where our problem is coming from. It's, it look as if some people deliberately are holding on to the services or holding on to people's rights so that people would listen to them. They would be forced to listen to them. Because if you need something and I have it, you have to come to me. So when you come to me, you'll be at my mercy. So we have to look at that angle too. We were talking about individually forming himself all together so that the individual will not fall. We all have our peak. And once we get to that peak, we are definitely going to fall. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us alive and Amin. make us not to fall. Amin. Uh, we said ab initial that what Allah kun ummatan wasato. Islam is a religion of middle course. Mm. As we are mentioning the video, we are also mentioning institutions. Mm. But the truth of the matter is that when we say institution, institution does not hold itself. It's individual that control every institution. Mm. If the individual, what we mean by individual is that if every individual is convinced ab initial mm. that this is the right thing and we want to do it, and they are more in number. They will be able to hold those institutions very firmly. Mm. I, will still come, I will still keep on underlining the issue of individual. Individual is well convinced. Even those people we are mentioning are because when we are looking for solution, mm. we should not be looking for solution at the at the line of those who are already, who already know and have the intention of doing things well. It's also on the part of those who are not doing things well now. Who we want them to change and do things well. Do they know that they are not doing things well? Being in light, Allah, the what Prophet Salam, what Allah told the Prophet, but as I said, told the regime, Kulia, you are not called the Jacule, Akume, or Biko Famani, Tada, by Namaya Tadi, and I'll see one dollar by Namaya de Lo Aleha, but my Anna Ale could be working. Oh, mankind. The truth has come to you from your Lord. Whoever followed this truth, he has done that on his part. He knows that they have told me. This is the right thing. And whoever followed the Hebrew also knows. Uh, we pray to Allah that they should understand. That's why program like this, education through schools, education through the mass media, education through different channels, it will help. And also praying to Allah that they should change. And also making sure that the right people in those institutions, they make positive change in policies. That will help. That will help making, making positive change. Okay, let's, let's open the line for our viewers at home to contribute. The number to call is 080 We have a call on the line already. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Your name and where you are calling from, please. Please, you have to speak up. We can't hear you. You have to speak up. We can't hear you. Your voice is very low. Hello? Hello, yes. Okay, we can hear you now. Your name and where you are calling from, please. I'm calling from Kano. Alhamdulillah. How is Kano this morning? Very fine. Alhamdulillah. Do you have a contribution on the topic or question? Sorry? Okay. Go ahead, please. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Go ahead with your contribution. I'm waiting for you to ask me the question. Sorry? I'm waiting for you. You're waiting for me? Okay, this is not interactive um, uh, segment. At interactive segment, we give out questions and then once you are able to answer it correctly, we, we also do not give. That's 540, not now. Thank you very much. So, you were still saying the individual and then, okay, those, those, uh, the, the uh, purpose of this type of discussion is for the individual, for those who know, and for those who do not know. Well, I'm now asking the question that those who do not know, do they know that they don't know? The, that's why because we have some people that they know for sure, but they pretend as if they don't know, because they benefit from the system. 
It's not that they don't know. And such people are very dangerous because they would not only uh, uh, be corrupt, they will also block those who do not want them to be corrupt. And that is the problem we're having now. Alhamdulillah, well, I mean, uh, it's a challenge, but it's not a challenge that is not surmountable. Mm. It can be broken. Um, uh, what we say is that if we have the right